Please, I'd like to welcome Randall Mann, President of Randall Anthony Communications and Service Provider of To The Glove and Mail. He leads a talented group of managing directors, editors, graphic designers to all communications needs of organizations of all sizes. Un aplauso. Yeah, so I think that was a very nice introduction, by the way, and, and uh, indeed, uh, I am a communication specialist, and a great deal of my work uh, is with the Globe and Mail, for which I produce a large number of supplements on a very broad range of subjects. Um, many of them, in fact, um, uh, and, well, along the way, I've been fortunate to write about Canada's growing interest and really imperative in export and trade diversification. So, uh, and. Among those markets, uh, what I've been finding is that, as it turns out, I've been covering a lot more uh, increasingly on Latin America. So, for recent examples, Brazil, Canada trade, South by South trade, uh, resource investment in Colombia, among uh, a numbers. And in fact, uh, on December 11th, we're publishing uh, an update on South by South trade that will appear in the report on business section. So, you mark that in your blackberries, but. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, as well as uh, in, in my direct business, I often have, uh, you know, beyond working with Export uh, Development Canada, uh, I work with a couple of local mining companies here in Vancouver. Guess what? They have uh, business interests in Colombia. So it was interesting to me because when Paula asked me to come and speak here tonight, I was saying, gee, Paula, I'm just not really sure if I've got a lot to say in this area. And as we talked, I realized, pulling back the lens, that in fact, over the past year or so, an increasing amount of my work has actually been connected with uh, uh, Canada and Latin American trade. So the interesting thing about that is, um, is that when I deal with organizations like Export Development Canada, uh, Western University uh, in, in Ontario, and uh, BRASCAN, they're all saying the same thing, and that is that uh, Canadians need to pay even more attention to Latin America. Um, get to know their people, their cultures, and their opportunities. And here's why. As uh, EDC economist uh, uh, Peter Hall would tell you, uh, as, as valued as our trade relationship is with the United States, uh, it has fallen and continues to uh, decline in degrees from better than 85% of our total export trade a number of years ago to less than 75% of trade today. At the same time, over that same period, uh, growth of uh, activity in the emerging markets is uh, heading north of 12%. So it behooves us to explore these opportunities. Uh, his advice is to start with the world's fastest growing economies, the BRIC nations of which, of course, uh, Brazil is the B. Um, and beyond that, uh, to look to the uh, entry markets uh, and collateral uh, markets around that, such as Mexico. Um, his colleague, uh, Vice President of International Business Development, Todd Winterhall, suggests that when looking at Latin America, that you really should look at the bigger picture, which is South by South trade. Uh, this entire uh, block, as I think a number of our speakers have pointed out today, is becoming increasingly uh, interdependent and the trade is growing among them. So EDC's advice is start with uh, 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 one market, but look to see how you can build bridges into markets beyond that. It's going on today. Um, are those markets open for business? I know from my work in the mining sector, for example, in Colombia, uh, they are very much open for business. I met the uh, uh, new representative for uh, Colombia here in Vancouver recently, Yaro. He's a super guy. He's very approachable, just like their policies. Um, the World Bank in 2011 ranked Colombia among the uh, top three business-friendly uh, places to do business in Latin America and among the top five countries worldwide for investor protection. So those are strong points. Um, so, as much as I can say about the economics and so forth, I know that I'd only be scratching the surface, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of my personal uh, observations as well. 
last February, uh, just coincidentally, my wife and I holidayed in Brazil. Uh, we decided it was a big uh, leap, love to travel, been traveling for a number of years, just like the uh, counselor here. And, um, and uh, it was a place where I'd never been, never been to South America. Um, and I can tell you that it was an exciting place to go, uh, visiting Rio and Sao Paulo, meeting the people uh, and learning about the culture. But also interesting to me, because of my work, was the absolute uh, evidence of a bustling economy. Uh, not only in those major cities and the build up towards the uh, coming Olympics and FIFA that are there, but also because we have to take a cruise that took us down to Uruguay and Argentina, uh, of which we were uh, less than uh, half a dozen English speaking people on board, I got to witness uh, firsthand the impact of Brazil's uh, growing middle class. And that influence in that region, those are people, one boat load, a microcosm uh, of the activity and how that is spreading into these other markets. And to see Uruguay and see the development that is going on there and a vibrant uh, city uh, uh, in, in uh, Argentina as well and all of that activity that's going on. So pulling that back, you know, when we think about entering these markets, and you think about Brazil, um, people often think, okay, so how could I get involved in what's going on in Sao Paulo or Rio? Well, those are big, big markets. There's a lot of activity. It's true. But um, as uh, Raul uh, Papaleo, he's the president of uh, the Canada Brazil uh, Chamber of Commerce in Toronto, said to me, that's well and good, but you should also be wise to look beyond into the smaller communities. In northeastern Brazil, for example, what was the most impoverished part of that nation just a few years ago uh, has seen economic growth that has outpaced China's. And as he says, the, the states in that region are encouraging that continuing growth through incentives and policies that will bring in business and build the partnerships that they need to, as was also pointed out earlier today, do things like train their workers. You've got a big gap between highly educated people and highly uneducated people. So the opportunities are all over the place. Um, I guess I close by saying that another Brazilian uh, uh, person who I've done, uh, had some interaction with over the year, I'd like to call her a friend, but uh, Juan Jean Obrega, uh, Brazil's uh, trade commissioner to Canada, uh, her advice, as I would say would be uh, echoed by EDC, is that when you're looking at these um, markets and these opportunities, to be patient, to do your homework. Uh, in Brazil's case, and as one just said to me, never think about Brazil in short terms, but as a lifelong partner. I think that that can be said for the relationships and the opportunities in Latin America in general, and I applaud this event for helping foster the kinds of conversations and relationships that are the nexus of business. So thank you very much.